<laughs> okay. Um, hi, Amber. I'm Carlin Fallas from the Play It Forward Grants, and it's really great to talk to you today. Um, nice first of all, I'm gonna, where are you from and your background? Um, I am originally from the Rova area, graduated Rova in 2003, so uh -huh. a little bit older. <laughs> um, the, I don't know, graduates and stuff, this, which they have it really rough this year. I couldn't imagine. Yeah. Um, I am right now in Peoria. And um, as far as background, um, I've been recording and singing for quite a while now. Um, I, I've always sang, like I did choir and show choir and everything um, growing up uh, in high school and everything like that. And then I always wanted to pursue it. I always wanted to do something with it. And I unfortunately had a bout with cancer. Um, I was diagnosed with a stage three papillary carcinoma in 2010. And it was really aggressive and it wasn't looking good. And it was um, looking like I probably wouldn't get my voice back either. But I was like, nope, forget that. I'm doing this. <laughs> and I, um, I, I'm cancer free. I've been cancer free for Let's see, my last treatment was in April, would have been four years, I believe. Um, and when I, I had completed a round of radiation and my dad talked me into auditioning for American Idol. And I was like, oh, I'm never gonna make it. But I did it and I actually surprised myself and I made it through two rounds, got the golden ticket and everything. So awesome. I didn't think that was gonna happen. And I was like, well, I'm gonna keep going from here, even though I didn't, you know, make it, you know, super far or you really didn't see me on the show or anything like that but um but like I wanted to keep going with music because I was like well if I surprise myself and I can do that what else can I do right so, um, I ended up uh recording my first single with uh Chris Arnell it's called Girl Like Me and Chris is like a pretty awesome producer he's Grammy nominated at the time he had one Grammy nomination and now he's got like I think seven or something like that um and he was a lot of fun to work with. And I just kept recording from there. And right now I'm in the middle of trying to finish up recording, um, like a full you know, album, finish it up. Cause I had three songs already and I'm gonna do another like three or four to finish, just finish everything up. Mm -hmm. But with the COVID thing, and that's kind of put a hinder on that. Right. Um, and then since 2016, I've had a backing band that I call The Maintenance and I play with them because I can't play guitar. I can play a little piano. I'm kind of scared to do it in front of people. I slept out my, not that good. So, but I write my songs and um, all the songs I've recorded, I wrote. Um, there's a newer one that I'm going to be putting on the album that um, on the 30th when I play um, a member of, you know, the maintenance of a band. Um, and his name is Chris Wingo. And he actually helped write one of the songs with me. So that'll be a lot of fun to play with him. And yeah. next guy talented kind of one man band thing he's got um some solo shows and stuff that he does on his own too and it's pretty cool to watch so we'll be glad that he'll be there with me saturday so <laughs> excellent how did you uh first get into music and who who influenced you or what influenced you um i mean i've been singing like since i could speak pretty much um i hear about it from like my parents and everything like oh i'm always singing and I think it was my third birthday they gave me like this little microphone like because I'd always use like little like hairbrushes or things around the house and use them as a microphone um and so they gave me one of those microphones that you know technology's come a long way since you know like when I was oh, three yeah. and like 19 <laughs> eight or whatever and it was one of the ones that had this little wire on it and you put it over the radio, you'd set it to like an AM station and you could sing over the radio <laughs> with that little <laughs> Yeah. So like, they gave me one of those and I rarely used it over the radio. I did sometimes and, but otherwise I was running around the house just singing to everybody with my little microphone there. And, um, but I mean, my parents are really big into music and everything. So I've always grown up with it and they've always encouraged me. Good. Pre-pandemic, what was your life as a musician like? Um, I was starting to get some shows booked. I was um, working on booking like a really big show that I was looking forward to. I don't want to say like too much just in case it for some reason doesn't happen due to pandemic stuff and get my hopes up because <laughs> I was looking forward to it. But I was 
trying to plan things for, especially when I finished recording, so I could, you know, get that out there and share it with everybody and um, possibly look into doing like a small, at least regional um, or local kind of tour. Um, I've been looking into, um, I've gotten contacts from booking out, uh, I don't know, different states and everything too. Um, and so things are seeming to pick back up. There had been like a short hiatus because I had lost a guitarist. Um, not like death or anything. It was right. just he got too busy and um, had, you know, his own thing going on at the time. And so I had just kind of started to regroup and get things picked back up and going again. And um, then this happened and it's like, really great that's when i start getting things going again everything was really picking up and doing well and looking really well mm -hmm. and it was just a really big bummer <laughs> well how are you currently dealing with life i am bored out of my mind <laughs> i have just been itching to do music and at home it's kind of difficult you know because it's you can still do it like my boyfriend and I, you know, he plays guitar and so we'll play stuff together and do living room karaoke and all that stuff. <laughs> but it's just not the same. Like I want to be able to be with the crowd again. I miss it. It's, it's really fun. I love being able to like talk with everybody after the show and everything too. And mm -hmm. you know, when they ask me about, you know, Oh, what's this song about or whatever. I like to be able to tell them the story behind it. I, I love doing that. Mm -hmm. With the restrictions and live gigs being non-existent for the moment, are you performing online any? I've been wanting to, but it's been really hard. Um, I've, you know, well, obviously I had a hard time figuring out Zoom. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> so it's girl. Like, yeah, <laughs> it's been hard to get everybody together, like kind of via Zoom or anything like that. Um, and then just not really even being able to like practice together and stuff um because people have kids and everything like I don't have kids but you know most people I know have kids and like um some members of my band you know the, the maintenance they have younger kids and of course they don't want you know to have any sort of risk of exposure and I obviously understand that mm -hmm. uh, so it's you know been a little more difficult to try and to try and plan alone let alone you know practice mm -hmm video or record something but I've been trying to figure something out and it's just been kind of hectic and if I if I, I just have to teach myself zoom or something some <laughs> well then maybe you can help me a little bit too <laughs> so how has your fan support been at this time um it's been pretty good um I've been trying to keep everybody in the loop of things going on um, with, you know, the play it forward. Um, I was sure I'm like, yep, I'm sharing this. I'll let everybody know because I know people have been, even if you're not in a band, people love music and they want to go to shows. Like, even though I am in a band, I miss going and watching bands play. Mm -hmm. I miss going to concerts. I miss shows. Like, I miss supporting other, you know, local musicians and things because there's a lot of talent around here. Like, mm -hmm. a lot. And I out and supporting them and hanging out and like trying to plan stuff like hey let's do a show together and stuff like that's fun and I miss it and I know other people do too and so this is kind of an exciting thing not just for us music, just musicians to help us out and give us a chance to you know give us that chance to play that we've been missing and everything but it's a chance for them to just get the feel like we can finally watch a concert it's not the same but it's still gonna be fun and I've also set up a uh, patreon account um, and I'm trying to I'm figuring things out as I go, but I've added some exciting things and it'll be better too once live shows are back because I've added a tier where there's like VIP experiences available. So when we do have shows upcoming and hopefully fingers crossed that the big one that I was right. trying to work out um, happens and that would be like a very awesome like VIP experience that I could offer for people for that. So. Mm -hmm. Do you have any advice for other musicians trying to navigate these times? Um, my advice would be probably just try to stay calm. Uh, the more you worry, the less you're going to get done. Um, because you're going to just freak yourself out and be so in your head and give yourself so much anxiety. You know, I can't do this. It's too hard and blah, blah, blah. Well, yes, of course it is. It's hard without COVID, but it's hard, especially even more so with it. But it's also a really good time to 
just kind of be in your own headspace, like work on things. You can plan things. You can spend the time to write music, like write your own original songs if you don't already. Um, and if you do already, then write more. I mean, write new ones. There's always inspiration everywhere around you. It's hard to think of it that way. But now that there's so much downtime and quiet time, you've got a little more time to think. And it feels, honestly, for me, it's been like a little less pressure to mm -hmm. put something out because there's more time to do it. And I don't know. It's just, just do what you can, you know, don't give up and it'll, it'll go away eventually. You know, the, what's the thing? <laughs> this shall pass and we'll be back out there. And, and in the meantime, you can just use this time to plan and come up with new ideas and new songs. And mm -hmm. What do you wish someone would have told you? Um, regarding anything or the COVID kind of stuff? Well, COVID, and then you can expand on that too if, they, if you feel like there's something that somebody would, should have told you about getting into music in the first place, either way. Um, with the COVID, I mean, I kind of wish somebody would have known like, hey, this is going to be a long ride, so buckle up because it's <laughs> not going to be just a month and it's going to get rough um, because obviously nobody knew it was just everything is very even still it's so unexpected and it's you know one day at a time kind of thing just everybody's figuring everything out all at the same time we don't know when we're going to be back to normal or when we're going to you know be able to do shows and stuff again so I don't think there's anything anybody really could tell you unless you know if somebody comes up with time travel first of all why are you not sharing that with us and second of all this would be the time. Come back and let us know. What do we got to do? We want to be released in the wild again. <laughs> Excellent. Um, and so on that vein, what do you think post-pandemic life is going to look like for musicians? I think, I mean, call me a wishful thinker and an optimist, but I think it's going to probably be a lot better. There's going to be because everybody's going to want to be out. Everybody's going to want to go see a band. Everybody's going to want to go out to a bar or a restaurant or just be out in general because we're all so bored and sick of being cooped up and everything. So I think that it's going to be a very good time for musicians once this is all said and done with. Mm -hmm. do you, how do you think it's going to be like for uh, fans after the pandemic's over? Um, I think it's going to be just as good for fans once it's over too because, you know, they will be able to go see music and shows again and there is not going to be a shortage of it because just as badly as they want to go watch shows we want to play them so bring it on <laughs> <laughs> um do you see music as being a vehicle for change uh, absolutely music's a vehicle for pretty much anything um like personally when i write songs i write about experiences and things that i've been through in my life personally um so my songs are kind of like a diary and it's cathartic to me it's just kind of getting it out there and healing and in the same sense it can be kind of a sort of reflection and you can you know write about you know things that have happened to you like i do and use that as like a what can i learn from this in your own personal life not necessarily in your songs but in your own personal life like I went through this, what, you know, and now that I know now what I should have known then, I wish I had known then. I know it now and I could move forward. And people can relate to that, you know, because everybody's been through something. Everybody has things that they, you know, they wish they'd done differently or things that they wish they, you know, knew that they know now that they would have known at the time, things like that. And so people mm -hmm. can relate and that helps with growth. It helps with change. And music can be inspiring and when it inspires people that inspires change speaking of inspiration do you have an inspiring memory i have a lot <laughs> <laughs> well, give me one <laughs> or two. I say, like, a really the really 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 big one for me though is um my choir teacher mr reamer um he was a mentor to me he you know I would stay after school working on music with him. Um, and, you know, he helped me work on my voice and everything like that. And so when I was sick and didn't think I'd get my voice back, I used things that he taught me, you know, exercises, vocal exercises and things to get my voice back. And um, I, you know, called him when I made it on American Idol and was like, you know, 
can't tell the media or nothing because we had to sign our life away when we right and so it's like you know you're not allowed we weren't allowed to say anything it was like six months until the episode aired from you know the filming until airing and stuff um and so we couldn't tell anybody but I wanted to call him and tell him you know like I did this and I would not have been able to do it if it weren't for you and all the things that you taught me and he was you know grateful but he was like no but you have to tell I was like no but you worked with me and you <laughs> it what it is and if it weren't for you and the things that you taught me I wouldn't be singing still you know mm -hmm. and, um I didn't know it at the time but he unfortunately was diagnosed with cancer as well and he passed away um, a few years ago, um, not too long after our conversation then actually, but he was just a really awesome person and a huge inspiration to me and all the success and everything that I have done and any success that I will have, it, you know, I owe it to him. I honestly do. Yeah. I, I know that music teacher and he was a great guy. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah that's awesome. I'm so talking about it, but like, yeah. <laughs> He, he was like, you know, he was like another dad to me. He was just an awesome person and Aww. he meant a lot. <laughs> um, do you have anything that you'd like to share from your American Idol experience? Um, it was, it was really fun. Um, they, they you, meet, you meet a lot of people and they're, everybody I met was awesome. I made a lot of friends. Everybody was really nice. Everybody's really supportive. It's definitely not like cutthroat and all of that, like they try to make it seem on TV. The people aren't like that. Mm -hmm. Producers, however, will kind of tell you to do things like that, but you know, it's all ratings, and, but people aren't actually that way. Mm -hmm. uh, and it, it was a lot of fun. And one thing I you know, can say is, I can't hear the songs uh, All Star by Smash Mouth because we were in the holding room, because it's very different, like when you see the initial auditions, um, where they're, you know, all the people in the auditorium and stuff. That's like before you go to the judges, that's you go to the producers and you either make it um, or you don't. They don't know your name from Adam. They, you know, you are, don't even have a contestant number. You go up, you sing, you don't say anything. And then they tell you, you know, yes or no. If it's a no, they cut your wristband off and you go away. If it's a yes, then you go back and spend a few hours with you know PR and you know producers and they tell you you know all the steps you need to take and take your picture and give you your contestant number and tell you when to come back and do your audition and that's what you see like the holding room spot is a completely different day and it's the people that you know made it past the initial point and that's where you know you know the judges and all that stuff you get your golden ticket and then you meet with like the head producers of the show. But when we were in that holding room, um, they played All Star by Smash Mouth over and over. It was the only song that played and it was on loop and I was going to lose my mind. Like, uh, <laughs> I, was scared and I was like, God, please let me audition. I just want out. <laughs> oh my it was like goodness. Waco or something. But like other than that, like it was a really fun, it was a really cool experience. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Well, at this point, what gives you hope for your future? Um, I've made it this far. I can keep going. <laughs> I mean, I've been through a lot. So, I mean, I, I don't, there's, if cancer can't stop me, what's going to stop me? I don't think a little COVID's going to stop me either. So. All right. <laughs> <laughs> so I think, you know, this is just a little hiccup for not just me, but for everybody right now. And we get through this everything's going to be fine. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, here's a, the, probably the most important question is where can people find out more about you? Um, on, I'm on Facebook, uh, Amber Hendricks and the maintenance. Um, what else? YouTube, Patreon, definitely. There's a lot more like, you know, personal, a lot of behind the scenes, um, old videos, old behind the scenes videos from practice <laughs> from music you know behind these and there's going to be more behind the scenes from like in the recording studio and music videos and backstage at shows things like that so there's going to be like very in-depth very like intimate you know everything on the patreon um and that's just patreon.com slash amber hendrix um i'm on instagram on uh, youtube so social media and especially with Patreon, pretty much an open book. So you can keep up to date with info and shows and 
see all the interesting and funny videos and behind the scenes and stuff like that. Excellent. Well, I'm so happy to have met you tonight, and I can't wait to meet you in person at the concert at the Bishop Hill Commons. Me too. So, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, good luck until then, and we'll see you. What is Thank it? Thank you. Weekend? Yes. It's, uh, yes, the 30th. At yeah. 4 PM. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, can't wait. Me Thanks too. so much for talking to me. Thank you. Uh-huh. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.